and I didn't really have any problems at Vanguard. Um, I had one little incident at Vanguard, and then when I got to Centennial, that's uh, that's when shit got crazy again. Because by that time, gangs was popping up, and uh, life was changing for everybody. You had to re, you had to re, uh, reestablish yourself. <laughs> that's when you had that, that situation with Pudding, right? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Walking yeah. through the senior school, continuing high school. And uh, one of his boys walked, pull up, pulled up on us. And we was an all TC. No, I was always a square man. I was always, I was always in a leadership position in some square shit. Okay. I was, I was leading ROTC um, back at Vanguard. I was um, doing other stuff at Centennial. I was a, I was a battalion commander for all TC and I had like 200 some kids behind me and uh Nobody liked our OTC, the internet, the football team, and we were just—we were just it, we, the, the ROTC is where you went to keep from dressing in school. You know how? And by the time you get to high school, nobody wants to dress for gym no more. Uh huh. If, if you had our OTC, you didn't have to worry about dressing for gym. So I had a whole bunch of folks for our OTC, and uh, we walking through the senior square, man. And my homeboy ran up on my partner. My partner was a tall, Blake Griffin looking dude, man. Uh, red hair, freckles, and light skin, just like great Blake Griffin. Um, he stuttered a little bit. <laughs> and homeboy ran up on him. And where you Popeye motherfuckers going? And my partner stutter. He's why why we why we gotta be 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 some Popeye Popeye motherfuckers. And he stole on him. Bam. He took one to the chin. He swole up real quick. And they squabbed a little bit. Security guards broke it up. Two days later, we walked through Enterprise Park. We leave Centennial. We all, he, he lived off of a, on the Prilla, and I, I lived on 132nd. So we cut to the park, and we both be home. He go one way, I go the other. Keep going straight. Well, we come to Enterprise Park, and there they are sitting on the bench. Same guys we had a fight with in the senior square. Ain't no security guards now. Mm. Ain't no security guards. Now, do we run? Or are we going to try and walk past these cats like we don't see them? We walk, we're gonna try and walk past them like we don't like, like we invisible. Yeah, like the king, work. right? <laughs> the king. <laughs> that didn't work. We walk past them. Uh, they, they gonna they gonna jump us. It's about seven of them now. They're gonna jump us. And uh one of the cats that was in the group, he lived on my street. He was a shot caller. His mama and my his grandmama and my mama. Coon boom. Jump him be there. So we he called the head up fight. Y'all got to go head up. Y'all can't jump him. Y'all got to go head up. Now, what I didn't know and what they didn't know is that my partner, because he was a six foot four, long, Blake Griffin looking cat, he'd been getting picked on all his life. He used to, he had taken some boxing lessons. And when they got to they squared off. Homeboy was putting the motive. He's bam, bam, bam. Mm. He did a whole. He, he. I'm not gonna sit there and tell you he beat homeboy's ass, but he did a whole lot better than he was supposed to. Nigga, take a dive. We can go home. Okay. He didn't take the dive. <laughs> he didn't take the dive. He put hands on him. Okay. And so you got this square dude putting hands on the so-called gangster. And now the gangsters are like, oh, look at, you know, they, they clowning their boy. They clowning him. Okay. He didn't like that. So we, we leave. They let us go. That's after, the, you know, after, after it was over with, we left. Next day I get back to school and a girl who lived on a, on a street and she lived on Pirate Rule. She said, I don't know what happened. This is what she told me at my locker. I don't know what happened at Enterprise Park yesterday. She was not there. But they talking about killing everybody in ROTC uh, at uh, at um, after after homeroom. Thank you very much. I got to go. Okay, and sure enough, nobody got killed, but all my partners got their ass beat. Everybody that was on my side wearing ROTC uniforms got hands put on them. Okay, damn, that's a true story. Mm-hmm. I was already in Guardian High School. <laughs> <laughs> I was already in Guardian. <laughs> That's real talk, that's, and, I, and that's, yeah, that's one reason why. And that's one reason why I never, never, 
never um because because i never like dealing with the gangbang situation because it's so fragile okay we was about to fight and get we were either, we were either prepared to, we, we were prepared to either die or kill over straight bullshit straight bullshit straight bullshit okay it was nothing about was worth me fighting for or getting killed for or killing somebody over it was straight bullshit and that was that's always been my philosophy when it came to a lot of this gang activity dude you tripping on me for what because i got an rtc uniform on i ain't doing nothing to you but you want to try and punk me and i ain't going for the punking okay i'm not going for that so because i stand up for myself and let you don't let you beat me up now i'm wrong come on man come on i'm not wrong for defending yeah. myself against your bullshit. and that's not a lot of times that's what you're dealing with okay somebody figures he, he belongs to a clique he got the right to pick on you and do what he wants to you if you stand up to him you're wrong huh i'm a man just like you are dude come on dude miss me with that bullshit. yeah okay and I'm, just I'm, think I'm about just like, yeah and, and just think about how many people are in prison right now you know for something that they let's say thankfully it didn't happen but let's say that you know he he, he killed you he, he shot you he'd be in jail right now over something as simple as calling somebody a popeye motherfucker Wait. and it going escalating from there and now he's 25 to life just think about how many people are in jail for dumb Dude, shit like that dude, prison imagine how many rappers get killed over a lot less man you know that and, and that's the part that 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 um see when you when you've got more years behind you than you have in front of you you understand life a lot differently okay these guys is do, talking on his head they, you know they, they don't they, they they don't think they got an aspiration date they just think everything can do all this right here and not and not have a problem Okay, and it ain't gonna be no repercussions, and that's bullshit. That's bullshit. And you know, you can, you know, when you got people going going to people's funeral homes and mutilating bodies and stuff like that, man, that's some seriously disrespectful stuff, dude. That hurts. That hurts. Yeah. And we've had situations like that in, in the last last year or so, where bot, people was killed, and they went to the funeral home and mutilated the man's body and did some twisted yeah. to the man's body. Dude, Peed on the grave. Somebody. Yeah. Come on. Man. Yeah. Dude, come on. So that's the part <laughs> that I don't think people will. And again, before I, before I leave that, it goes right back to what I said earlier people, shock value. Shock value. Mm. To piss on somebody's grave or to go to the funeral home and do something to a, a body. That's shock value. That's how, that's how cold I am. Piss on his grave. Okay. Yeah. That's how cold I am. Somebody gonna, you know, hey, money gonna hit your ass up. 